Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. On this day in which we study Matthew 4, 12 to 25, the gospel lesson for the third Sunday of Epiphany. I want to begin with a map because the lesson itself, the gospel lesson, begins the ministry of Jesus with a really extraordinary geographical orientation and a citation from Isaiah that really shows how Jesus' ministry in Galilee is placed in a geographical context that actually is very important. One of the expressions we're going to see from Isaiah is the notion of the way of the sea. And I want to start with this map here so that you can see that the way of the sea, uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense, begins with Damascus, comes over here by Mount Hermon, and then comes down the Jordan River, to the Sea of Galilee. Now here is Capernaum, where Jesus has his main location during his ministry, specifically because it is on the way of the sea. So the people coming down from Damascus would have to stop here for the night usually, and they would have perhaps some contact with Jesus or the synagogue there where Jesus taught. Now the way of the sea indicates that they would come over here now to Ptolemais, or they would come down here to Caesarea. These two places were significant cities on the Sea of Galilee where the, sea, the way of the sea would go. <clears throat> so, I mean, Jesus positions himself in a very crucial place that gives him kind of just a huge amount of contact. Also, people could go over here to the Decapolis, or people from the Decapolis could come and pick up the way of the sea here. So, I mean, you can see that Jesus is in a crossroads. And that, you know, as we know from the other Gospels, that two and a half years of his ministry is in this area. And, and people are traveling by Capernaum all the time. Now, if we go to our text, I think we can see that... <coughs> This language is how the, the Galilean ministry of Jesus is introduced in Matthew's Gospel. Now, you know, right before this, we have the, uh, the temptation in the wilderness. And we hear now that John has been handed over. There's the language, the passion language. But it's used here of John, delivered. You know, it, it's, it's the night in which we, uh, he was betrayed language. And here we, we, you know, we, we have our geographical location, Galilee, Nazareth, um, now Capernaum, you know. Um, it, it's really quite extraordinary that Jesus leaves Nazareth to go to Capernaum. He leaves his hometown and he comes to this strategic location. Notice it's, it's also given its sort of, you know, orientation in terms of the Old Testament. And then the quotation from Isaiah. We're going to see there are three parts to this text for today. I mean, one of them is this sort of introduction to the Galilean ministry. And here's that language, the way of the sea. I mean, this was a technical term. I, I, you know, I should have said it when I had the map up there, but I was on the way of the sea for five weeks when I was doing an archaeological dig up in Caesarea Philippi, which was on the foot of the, uh, the, the mountain of Hermon and the, the source of the Jordan River is there. And we had a lot of discussion about being on the way of the sea. And it, it, I mean, it is, it is, for the Jews at the time of Jesus, this would have been a very significant statement. And you can see, again, Zebdalin and Naphtali, the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. You know, you can almost see the, get, the Gentile mission being anticipated here. And then th this, this movement from darkness, you know, <clears throat> to light, you know, the people who have uh, walked in darkness, dwelling in darkness, you know, there's the language of, of, of darkness. They have seen a great light. Notice how those two words are right next to each other, you know. So the people who have walked in darkness, they have seen a great light. That light is dawning in Capernaum with the ministry of Jesus. 
on the way of the sea. Um, and, you know, it's, again, that wonderful Hebrew parallelism where it says, for those dwelling in the region in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And again, the shadow of death here is put right next to the light. Beautiful writing, you know. And you can see that <clears throat> this introduction here, really to geography, but really to the sense of the strategic location of Jesus in Capernaum, on the way of the sea, for the Gentiles who sit in darkness and now have the light shining upon them in the darkness and in the shadow of death. And then you get here this, this statement about what it is that Jesus is preaching. And there's that important word, you know, that you know, is the, the word for kerygma, the word for preaching, that, that sense of the creative word of Jesus that does what it says. And you can really hear an echo of John the Baptist here. And you can see a nice frame here between John being locked up in prison and now his message, now coming through the voice of Jesus, repent for the kingdom of the heavens is drawing near. And of course, that is a reference to Christ himself. Now, the repentance needs to be understood in terms of the, the, the shadow of death and the darkness and the fact that the light is now here in Christ. So you, you, in a way, you have the message of John the Baptist here and now the message of Jesus. You know, the kingdoms of the heaven has a king, and that king is Christ, and his coronation is on a cross, and his crown is a crown of thorns. So I think you can really see here in the opening almost enough to preach on. That's so true of many of these texts. Uh, the second part of the text, a very important part that I think you know you can really sort of see here as being significant in terms of the 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 nature of um, of the the ministry itself takes us now to the call of the disciples and the call of the disciples is you know really so important in all the Gospels and uh, the transition is to the fact that we are on the Sea of Galilee, so we still have this geographical sort of orientation. Um, Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee, so he's, you know, he's, he's in his home area, but you know, not in Nazareth, but in, in Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee because he is a Galilean, so to speak. The two brothers, and here they are, Simon, the one called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. Now, these are the first two, the brothers that are being called in Matthew's gospel. They're fishing. Okay? They're doing their vocation, so to speak. And here's the call. You know, And the call is one that is very familiar. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. I've, I'm always alerted to this in Matthew because the great catch of fish in Luke 5, where Peter is called, uh, Luke has catch men alive, you know, not be fishers of men, but catching men alive. But the, the, the language of discipleship is here. They followed him. These are the, the, this is the, the language of those who are his disciples. So here you have Peter and Andrew, and then there, there's a, another call. He sees two other brothers. These are the sons of Zebedee. Uh, James and John, uh, I think most of you know that this is the one who's martyred in Acts 12. He is the, the Spanish Santiago. I'm very, very fond of him. This is, of course, the evangelist. And with Peter, they make up these three. These are the big three. These are the ones who are on the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, they're the ones who kind of get the inside baseball from Jesus. And here we have their call. Um, it is really quite, you know, specific here. So you know that the evangelist knows these people. You know, the, the, um, the father of Zebedee, they're, they're, they're fixing their nets. I mean, the detail here 
is remarkable. And you can see that this is, this is a very familial scene where Jesus, you know, the, the one who comes as Messiah here, is coming to a place where there are people who, you know, live and know each other, and he knows them. And, you know, I love it. He's walking by the sea, you know, and he sees these brothers. And then in, in verse 21, you know, going on from there, he sees two more brothers. It, it gives the impression that he's walking by the sea. Um, if this is the language of discipleship to follow him, here's the language of call, calling them. You know, obviously, the word itself means that. And, and they, they, they do what Jesus is going to instruct everyone to do who wants to be his disciple. They leave everything behind, you know. And, and notice this. I think it's really, it shows you that there's a, a break here in the kinship laws, so to speak, and their father. They leave their family behind because their new family now is Christ. And he is, you know, I mean, you can see this in the genealogies that the, the, the idea of being family by blood is no longer a significant part of being a Jew. It is, it is being a follower of Jesus, being part of the church, the family of God. And then the reiteration of the language of follow. Um, if you just look at this in terms of uh, the, the way in which, you know, the, the, <coughs> the text is beautifully formatted by the evangelist. You, I have in green here the, the calls of the two disciples, you know. You know, here's the one of uh, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and then the, it's, of course, paralleled down here. You've got the language of discipleship here in these two places. And here is, is the call, okay, and that's reiterated. I really should have put this in blue, that he called them. That's, that's, that's where that would have occurred there. So, I mean, beautiful parallelism. And I didn't mention here, you know, immediately they leave their nets here. They immediately leave their boat. I mean, you, you, you have sort of the double call here. And this is setting up now what's going to be the new Israel. And as I said, we, we really have the call here of the big three. Simon, Peter, James, and John. That brings us to our last passage. And I think it's important to see here in this last passage that we have a, a bit of a summary uh, it's a, a statement here that I think makes it very clear that the fame of Jesus, this is, in, I, I, you know, as you know, I'm a more familiar with Luke's gospel. Luke has all these fame passages but where, you know, his, his notoriety goes out through all of the surrounding countryside. Um, here you, you, you really get the impression that Jesus saturated Galilee. He goes out through all of Galilee. And, you know, I always point out that, you know, he sends out the 12. They probably went two by two. And then in Luke's gospel, he sends out the 72 by two. So that's 35 groups, and this is six groups. And they saturate Galilee, going village to village. So, I mean, everybody knew Jesus. And here is the rhythm of his ministry, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now, that, of course, contrasts with the, the kingdom of the heavens. Not contrasts, it parallels, it complements. And, and his healing, you know, um, the, the diseases and, and, and every sort of malady, pains that, that people have. And I think, you know, in Luke's Gospel, I call this the prophet Christology. But I think it, it certainly is here. It's a little different. It's maybe not as crisp in Matthew because it's not one of his main themes. But Jesus, you know, is first and foremost a preacher, teacher, or actually the way it has here, teaching and preaching. And, and he performs healing, miracles that testify to his presence in the creation, bringing in the new creation, healings, miracles. I think it's very important to see that. 
And, um, you know, what the, the kingdom of the heavens is, the, excuse me, the gospel of the kingdom, is the fact that Jesus is present announcing that the world is now being released by his preaching and his miracles of healing, that he is releasing the world from its bondage. I think it's not insignificant that right after this, we go out into Syria. You know, now that's where Damascus is. So he's going outside the confines of Galilee and, and, and you know, really Israel itself. And in going outside of Syria, you can see that people know, know who he is. And, and they're, they're desperate for what he has. They're bringing to him, you know, all those who are broken, you know, who are sick. And you can see, I mean, look at the, 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 the categories here. Um, it's really quite extraordinary. Those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, you know. The, these are the broken people of God. These are the outcasts. These are the unclean. And he comes here, you know, doing his miracles of release. He's releasing the captives. And it says it. He healed them. There it is. So you got healing referred to twice here. You know, again, that sort of parallel. And in fact, we actually don't, I mean, I guess you could say this is an example of his preaching. But his healing is described here. And many of the crowds become disciples. There's that word again. So you saw it up here. I got it up here. It comes back again. They're disciples. And notice that we began with a geographical sort of orientation, you know, for the ministry of Jesus, citing Isaiah. And now we end with it. And we see that the ones who are following him are from Galilee, from the Decapolis, from Jerusalem, and Judea, and all the surrounding part of the Jordan. Now that's a huge area, and that Jesus is saturating the entire area with his presence and with his gospel. So we come to a point now where I think we can see that, that you have three different parts of the text. You know, you've got first of all, the, 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 the ge geography of his ministry and the importance of where he is. You've got the call to discipleship of specific disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And then you get a glimpse of his ministry as a prophet who comes teaching, performing miracles, that then creates more discipleship. Discipleship. And that what comes from this is the saturation of Galilee with the, the knowledge, the fame, that Jesus is doing messianic things. Um, if you think about our season of Epiphany, we began, of course, with the baptism of our Lord. And, and there you can see the title from the Father, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased or this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then last week, we saw that son described as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We saw him described as the Son of God. We saw him described as the Messiah and the Christ. Now this week, we're seeing the work of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We're seeing, we had a hint last week of the call of discipleship. You know, in my Greek readings class, I told the guys, wait, because that's coming up as a major theme this week, the one we're talking about right now. But you can see the work of Jesus as Messiah Christ is taking place now in Galilee. And so this is the ongoing light of Christ, the light that, that shines in the darkness, the light that comes to those who are dwelling in the shadow of death. Jesus the light of the world. 